from the station with the most local news. This is News 4 at 4. Right now on News 4 at 4, a cheering crowd welcomed incoming President Donald Trump at a luncheon this afternoon in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. Trump has less than 24 hours until he takes the oath of office. Diane Gallagher starts our live team coverage in Washington, D.C. Yeah, well, there are nearly a million people here in Washington, D.C., celebrating some sort of inaugural event over the weekend. Of course, a lot of people in many high-profile groups also skipping out. At least five dozen Democrats are boycotting the inauguration. Of course, thousands of protesters are in town as well. This is the city prepares for really what is the first big security test since Donald Trump was elected president. Donald Trump is about to take up residence at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. We're ready to go at 12.01 tomorrow. The event that will officially send him there, a massive security challenge. We've got to be uh, vigilant. We've got to plan. We've got to prepare. Thousands of law enforcement officers from a range of agencies are working around the clock. But for all the preparation, the event itself will be rather modest. At least compared to recent inaugurations, fewer big name performers, a shorter inaugural address, one that Trump says he's writing himself. It's going to be a very personal and sincere statement about his vision for the country. I think it's going to be less of an agenda and more of a philosophical uh, document, a vision of where he sees the country. The parade scheduled to last just 90 minutes, not several hours, and only three official inaugural balls down from Obama's 10 in 2009. The excitement being tempered, however, by news that former President George H.W. Bush and his wife Barbara have been hospitalized in Houston. The president is stable, resting comfortably in the ICU. He's going to remain in the ICU for observation. Trump tweeting his concern, saying he's hoping for a speedy recovery. Thursday, Trump and Vice President-elect Mike Pence are attending a series of events in Washington, including a wreath-laying ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery. A somber moment, a first in a series of events marking the beginning of the Trump presidency. And of course, right now, the sort of pre-inauguration concert, they're calling it the Make America Great Again concert. Uh, festivities should be kicking off any moment now there at the National Mall. The president-elect and vice president-elect will be in attendance, we are told, after the likes of Toby Keith and Three Doors Down and Lee Greenwood perform. Uh, Donald Trump and Mike Pence will come to Union Station here in Washington, D.C. for a candlelight dinner with some major donors. Reporting live in Washington, I'm Diane Gallagher. Back to you. Diane, thank you. Turning now to your top four for Trump's infamous use of Twitter has caused some controversy. Now companies are making plans on what to do if they're called out by the tweeter in chief. Alex Wagner explains. I've been quite active, uh, I guess you could say, in an economic way for the country. The president-elect was busy tweeting at big business. Earlier this month, Trump targeted General Motors on Twitter for Mexican-made Chevy Cruises, threatening make in USA or pay big border tax. GM stock dropped 1%. The company said most cruise models are made in Ohio. Lockheed Martin's shares also plummeted nearly 3% when Trump tweeted that the defense company's F-35 program costs were out of control. Lockheed's CEO personally vowed to lower costs. We're gonna get those costs way down and we're going to get the plane to be even better. Hits to both companies' stock prices were temporary. Presidents and brands have always intersected over the years, but this is an entirely new level of engagement. Abby Klassen is chief marketing officer for ad agency 360i. Because Trump's Twitter feed can instantly hurt or help a company, she says brands need to be ready for anything. It's about thinking through the motions of, OK, how would we react if Trump tweeted this? positive thing to us if he tweeted this negative thing to us. A financial app called Trigger has even created an alert to notify users if Trump tweets about a company they've invested in. Rachel Mayer is CEO. He's tweeting about specific companies, calling them out on Twitter, and that's having massive effects in the stock market. The company's app tracks major financial news and events, or Trigger, to help investors. The latest Trump alert quickly became their most popular feature. One single tweet we've seen can eradicate market cap losses in the billions of dollars. One single tweet can adjust the strategy of a large Fortune 500 company. Stay with us for much more inauguration coverage throughout the newscast. We'll have a live report from News Force and Lena Shapiro in Washington, D.C. in the next half hour.
In western New York, a man involved in a deadly boating accident in the town of Tonawanda has been sentenced. A judge sentenced 51-year-old Timothy Wisniewski to the maximum of two to four years in prison. The jury convicted him of multiple charges, including criminally negligent homicide for an accident that happened on his boat in June 2015. 16-year-old Avery Gardner died when she stood up on the boat and hit her head on a pedestrian bridge on Ellicott Creek. Authorities say Wisniewski knew she had been drinking and smoking weed. Gardner's 17-year-old boyfriend, Gregory Green, was driving the boat at the time. He's now serving 17 months in jail. You're the adult that morning, and you didn't take control of the situation, and a young woman died. You want to party with kids, you'll pay the price. And Mr. Wisniewski today paid the price. Wisniewski's attorney says they plan to repeal the conviction. They have 30 days to do it. Police are looking for information in a shooting that killed a 20-year-old Buffalo man last night. It happened around 10.45 last night on Keystone Street. The victim's name has not yet been released, but police say he was shot in the arm. If you have any information, call police at 847-2255. We now know the name of the teen killed yesterday in a serious car crash. His father tells News 4 the victim is a 17-year-old. His name is Zare Abernathy. These are pictures of him. Uh, police say uh, he lost control of his car and crashed into a tree on Kensington Avenue. Three 14-year-old girls were also in the car. Two of them are in critical condition. One is listed as stable. All three are freshmen at the math, science, and tech prep school. Police have not released the girls' names. A school spokesperson says counselors will be at the school for support. We are only 19 days into the month of January, and we've already had 19 overdose deaths. Deadly trends are spiking again as Erie County continues to battle the opioid epidemic. County leaders gathered today to announce a new initiative to fight it. It comes after hundreds of people died from overdoses last year. News 4's Dave Graber talked to officials and joins us now. Dave. Well, Christy, by this time yesterday, it had been determined that 19 people had died from drug overdoses thus far in 2017. That's more than one person a day. Now, those on the front lines of the opioid epidemic have seen this trend before, so they're working to combat the problem at the source. Their message today, dealers beware. Erie County's newly elected District Attorney John Flynn announced today the appointment of an entire unit and an additional attorney to his narcotics team. He says the number of cases within his department is mounting, just as the deaths mount out in the community. That means these three attorneys will be focusing solely on the county's problem with opioids by attacking the epidemic from the streets to the courts. Flynn also said his office will work more with addicts who commit petty, nonviolent crimes to get them into treatment rather than just sending them to jail. Overall, he said something needs to be done. We are only 19 days into the month of January and we've already had 19 overdose deaths. That is unacceptable, that is tragic, and we as public officials have an obligation to try and do something about this. Now, because they're just shifting resources and focusing on one particular crime, in this case, narcotics and opioids, Flynn said the new attorney will not be an added cost to his department. Now, coming up on News 4 at 5.30, I'll take a look at how well the county's opioid task force, which was launched in August, is working. Live in the newsroom, Dave Graber, News 4 at 4. The clock is ticking. The city must decide where to build a new train station. The first public meeting was held today, where officials weighed in on where they think it should go. Mayor Byron Brown heads the 17 member committee for the project. Some locations being considered are the old Central Terminal, Canal Side, and Larkinville. Many members of the Common Council think it should be at uh, the Central Terminal. They think it would create a renaissance for the area. But the mayor and business members think it would boost tourism and business if it was downtown. News 4's Al Vodders is following the story on News 4 at 5. He'll tell us how soon a decision needs to be made.